John de Marco Learning aquí en YouTube, el día de examen. Bienvenidos, que tengas buena suerte hoy. Hoy vamos a charlar un poquito sobre lo que tenemos que tener en cuenta este día y las cosas que, que van a asistirte en, entre ahora a la una por la tarde, Eastern Standard, y uh, el examen a las cuatro. Tenemos menos de tres horas. Ustedes tienen que tener en cuenta que a las tres y media, Eastern Standard, tienes que log into your app. Now, let's talk a little bit about the app. I want to make sure that we are all set up on YouTube here. I want to welcome you as you guys are coming into the chat. Let me know where you're coming from, what you're doing, why you're here. Some of y'all um, are my people who attended other lives. Um, I see Anna, Max, Jake, again, great to see you. Bienvenidos a todos, Dr. Fluttershy. I was answering some of your questions on YouTube last night and this morning, trying to make sure that we got everything in. At Marco Learning, we're always here to help you guys. So definitely subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, press that like button. Let's get to work, guys. We've got stuff to do. A couple questions I've been getting, guys, are is actually about the app itself and some of the rules and regulations. Pro tips from the College Board about the app. So first of all, you got to download the app. Let's get the actual um, uh, description up here. I'm going to go to the College Board's website. If you just Google World Languages app, you'll find it. And we'll post some links in the chat and the description. Um, aquí estamos en el sitio de web de College Board, mi favorito. Aquí, an app store for Apple and Google Play. So if you're watching this en vivo or luego, remember, you cannot take this exam on a Chromebook, desktop, laptop of any kind. You must work from the app. When you're working in the app, which I, if you have not done, um, yes, and by the way, let Spanish indeed um, great Belen, all the wonderful people. Um, hello from Kentucky. This is so great. Um, do I think the test is going to be about ciencia, tecnología? No sé, pero tenemos una, un tipo de tecnología aquí, the app for the thing. Let me know in the, in the chat whether you guys have already downloaded the app and practiced. Now, if you download the app, it works. It does not work on very old iPhones or um, other devices. And there's some Android devices where it's not working. So definitely get yourself over to Google Play, get yourself over to the App Store. I'm gonna open this up and um, it's gonna say here, and this is what it says, is that my exam is in practice mode. Antes de empezar el examen hoy, you have to close out of this before the exam. So you like swipe up, Right, and you, um, I'll just real quick, you swipe up and because you're about to cancel and you straight up cancel that, close it out and you log in from there. There is an instructions video that we're gonna put in the chat in just a second about that walks you through all of this stuff. So yes, it looks like you practice five times today, you've downloaded, um, <clears throat> Yes, good. We've got some Carter. They're great. I'm glad that was able to help you. Ecuatoriana de Tampa, Florida. Florida, muy bien. Uh, it's okay. Is it okay to talk over the beep? Once that like beep goes, guys, you will not, um, it will not record anything else. And you know what? You, you do not need to be perfect on this exam right? And this is true of every single AP exam. You're never writing a final draft essay. You're never producing perfect speech. Remember, que hay 22 minutos, 22, y hay de hablar 3 minutos y 40 segundos. Guys, you're only going to be speaking for 3 minutes and 40 seconds for a total of, uh, of, with all the instructions and everything, 22 minutes. Now, while the app is in English, of course, the actual experience will be in Spanish. You're going to receive instructions in Spanish, and you're going to re receive instructions in English um, as well, multiple times. We'll take a look at the format. C question we're I'm getting a lot on YouTube, guys, is about auriculares. So, um, and again, they do a little bit of stuff here with um, Q&A. So, and by the way, how long is the exam? Mira este. 22 minutos. Español, italiano, alemán, francés. Pero en chino y japonés, 15 minutos. Um, what an incredibly short exam. It's only 22 minutes. So you have it downloaded, auriculares. Do I use these headphones or not? First, you need to practice them. Make sure that your microphone isn't a piece of garbage or that your thing is not like tangled up like mine is. 
you need to make sure that um, you have a system that works for you. Some people will have it on speaker like this and that works fine. You're not holding it up to your ear like this. You're speaking into the app, recording yourself. So if I did put a himblo in practice mode, quiero practicar hoy el día de examen. And then I can see whether or not I, I successfully recorded that. Quiero practicar hoy el día de examen. Ah, I sound very formal. Um, and remember, this is an informal conversation for the first part of the exam and then a formal presentation. Auriculares are optional. You do want to have, they've instructed you with the College Board to have notes, pen and paper, something in front of you. You are allowed to search things on the internet. It's open book, open note. But guys, que pesadilla. Buscar el internet en un examen con... Uno segundos, right? Like, why spend that much time? I actually have a video about the open book, open note exam that's a trap. I also have a playlist of videos after this live is over and you guys have a million questions. Post your questions in the chat. We're going to be answering them this afternoon. But I do want to show you real quick. We also have a playlist on this channel right here. There's my goofy face. Um, how to get ready for the Spanish exam. Just a quick intro to the format. Th and then four consecutive review sessions I did. The session I did last night, plus this session, more than you can even watch. Um, so definitely subscribe to our channel. Pay attention to all that. That's right there um, on our page. So, um, so let's see. Um, and let me just see real quick. I'm going to take a look at, yeah, there's not enough time to play that game. Um, yeah, do not, do not use, like, I think, and, and again, this is what I said in my open book, open note video, like, the internet is a huge distraction for people. It's going to cause panic. It's going to cause all this stuff. The, it is most important that you have your auriculares in, or you have whatever system, you have your note taking, and you work from the response they give you. You're not just, it's just not going to work that way. You will have a full four minutes to prepare for the oral presentation. Let's take a look at the formatted exam before we look at some more samples. So I'm on the College Board's website. That's how I know my information is accurate. Y vamos a ver uh, aquí um, este AP Spanish language. So aquí en el sitio de web de College Board, la información que sabemos. A las cuatro por la tarde, Eastern Standard. Yo estoy aquí en Nueva Jersey, donde vivo yo, a la una. En dos horas y veinte minutos, at 3.30 Eastern Standard Time, ustedes tienen que log in to el, the app using the ticket that was emailed to you from the College Board. It's 22 minutos. You download the app here. As they say, um, and by the way, in el sitio de web, the college board, there's an exam walkthrough that really takes you through the whole process. It's really go, we're gonna put the link to this um, in the chat. And to the college board's credit, they've done a really nice job of explaining how to do stuff. They give you some reminders, like you need to make sure you have a good connection, right? Try to get on Wi-Fi. You need to have at least 25% battery. When I started um, to use the app, it didn't have enough battery and they were like, Hasta luego. Um, you need to get some batteria in your telefono. Um, they also point out, like, turn on that do not disturb notifications. They, you get your e-ticket, and I'm going to watch this. We'll do this how you guys all do this, which is like watching it on double speed um, to just go through real quick. Estas reglas, you have your numero de e-ticket. You use that to enter into the exam. You, that's your code. You click that. You fill out your información. You sit around and wait until the exam starts. You begin. Now, here's where you want to make sure you press yes to the microphone button. You go through the whole process. So any questions you have um, are in that um, link there that we just posted um, there. And I'm not going to blah, blah, blah. Um, OK. So they have this on the College Board's website. We just posted in the chat. There we go. Now, let's go back to um, the format of this exam. Tenemos 22 minutos. Vamos a charlar, a hablar dos veces. Um, so this is everything you want to have in front of you. Um, this is a minor point. You need at least 30 megabytes of storage. So if your phone is jammed with your nonsense TikToks, like, keep that. Um, okay, so we've got, um, yeah, you're allowed to have class notes or study guides, any books, any textbook or other classroom resources, any print online or app-based dictionary to look up words. So dictionaries are permitted open in front of you to help you out any previous assignments or assessments pen and paper but look at this pile of junk lo que es permitido aquí mira notas guías libros 
otros recursos de la clase, everything they internet, they print, it's really a mess. You need to think about your space right now. So I want to take a minute, everyone, and I want you guys in the chat, because I haven't looked at the chat in a minute. I want you guys to tell me what you plan to have in front of you. Is it pen and paper? Is it headphones with a text? Are you going to have a dictionary in front of you? Do you want to even go down that rabbit hole? Or do you want to follow my recommendation, which is minimal stuff in front of you? Trust your own voice. So I personally, I would do it on a computer because I prefer, like, I feel like I could type more. I would definitely have a dictionary there if I like wanted to, but that would be like it, all this other junk. Que pesadilla. Entonces, um, so I'm going to look here real quick. Um, yes, what, okay, here we go. Cultural comparison, good. We're going to go through that format in just a minute. Um, and um, I'm going to be on this for about an hour. I want to make sure I answer everyone's questions. We're getting so many great questions on the Marco Learning YouTube channel. And again, I want to welcome you and say bienvenidos a todos. If you like this video, press that like button, subscribe to our channel. We're going to be going live after AP season with all kinds of updates and college admission stuff and SAT and ACT stuff. Everything that we can give you guys on our YouTube channel to help you out because that's what we do here at Marco Learning. It's my name is John, um, and there are there's a lot of other people at Marco Learning. Um, Marco is not me; is actually my dog. Let me show you all. Esta, este es Marco. That's actually a pillow of my dog, but he appears on our Instagram channel. If you don't follow us on Instagram, do that as well. Um, so one of the things I want to take a look at. Um, let's see. Um, Google Docs and Google Translate on papel, auriculares, lapis, pluma, Google Translate, agua, mi teléfono, un borrador. That's a lot of stuff. But again, if you have all of that here, pen, paper, páginas de summary of each topic, phone, laptop, Quizlet, all of that. Okay, so that is the, the plan you have. You have the app downloaded, you have your auriculares, which are optional. You lay out the stuff that's in front of you. Again, a lot, really basically everything's permitted. What's not permitted is impersonation, trying to pass this off as someone else. Remember, guys, that the audio files you produce will be property of the College Board, and the College Board will send them to your teacher, your AP Spanish teacher. So if you're like, hola, yo me llamo Joe, and then like the actual performance is like, hola, me llamo Joe, right? Your teacher is going to be like, uh, that wasn't you. That guy was 50. So stop it. Um, you, so impersonation is not going to work for this exam unless you plan to cheat on multiple levels there. Um, and I have a video on cheating where I yell at people like, don't cheat. People didn't like that video, but truth. Let's talk about the format. 50% of the exam is going to be a modification of the typical conversation question, what we call FRQ3, free response question three, conversación. It's similar to the usual one, but it's been modified to allow for oral, that is like heard, delivery only. So. You're not going to have like print instructions in front of you. You're not reading. You're listening. Escuchando instrucciones en inglés y español y respondiéndolo en, en, a, a todas las preguntas en es español solamente. In the practice of the app, it's all in English. That's just for all the languages, but it will, of course, be in Spanish. It will take the form of a phone interview or survey. The interlocutor, the person asking you questions, is going to talk about this thing. It's what we call a peer-to-peer -peer conversation. People were asking me, is it formal? Is it informal? Um, <clears throat> and the answer to that is it informal for the conversation. You can speak how you like. Now, one thing Nadine is asking for is about going through all the different prompts. I actually did that. If you look on Marco Learning's YouTube channel, um, that was on the app here on this, we have a playlist. And it was, I think in this study session right here in our playlist, where I went through the CED, the course and exam description. And we'll post a link of this um, in here for the course and exam description. Remember for this year's exam, guys, and this is on the College Board's website, you are only responsible for units one through four not units five and six. So ciencia, tecnología is very possible. Familia, belleza y arte. Cultura y lenguaje, como el lenguaje in, influye a cultura. All of those units one through four are there. I have another video in our playlist that walks through all of that stuff. So again, I'm just covering because we're getting a lot of these questions about what happens. Empezamos con conversación. Es 50% del examen. Y vas a hablar en una manera informal con este interlocutor, interlocutor who's almost like running a survey. 
and the interlocutor starts and ends the conversation. Do you need to be perfect? Do you need to be a native speaker? Do you need to fill up all the time? No, 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 no. What you need to do is respond with details. Let me say something about conversation. You are not gonna radically transform your AP Spanish score. I said this to my world people, and I said this to the people in English language. You're not gonna radically transform your score in the next two hours. What you can transform is your frame of mind. So right now you're like panicking, uh, questions, Marco learning, ayúdame, socorro. Um, like chill, you have the app downloaded. I told you to do that. You've got your headphones, you have your notes and whatever dictionary in front of you. And then that question comes, you listen very intently, and you trust your own voice. And when you respond, if you're a native speaker, you wanna respond with a really specific answer. So if I say, hey, let's just do a question you will not get. Um, ¿Cuál es la capital de España? You could just be like, Madrid, okay? Like what's the capital of, of, of Spain? Or you could say, la capital de España es una ciudad muy importante que se llama Madrid. Yo viví en Madrid en el año 2012, blah, blah, blah. Notice what I did? I answered with details. So they're not going to ask you a fast fact-based question. They're going to say, what do you think we should do about this? Why? And you say, debemos hacerlo porque es muy importante uh, para mí y para mis amigos en la ciudad donde vivo yo. And so again, I took a yes or no kind of, or like a why thing, and I stretched it out into a long sentence. That's your goal. Do you need a perfect accent? No. If you're, if you're a native speaker, don't necessarily rely on your native accent to get you through. R write that full sentence. So in English, here's what this might sound like. It might go, it might go something like this. <clears throat> if you ask me like, um, what's your favorite thing to do on the weekend? As a native speaker of English, I might just be like, I don't know, watch the office and chill. Um, as an a a AP like English version of this, let's say not like the English example like this, I would go <clears throat> on the weekends. I enjoy watching television, especially the te television show, The Office, which is really funny and is my favorite. I also enjoy spending time with friends and family and cooking meals. All of these are things that really make my weekend meaningful, right? And that's corny and fake and whatever, but I just got more points than the real version of me that was like office, popcorn, right? So that's what you're doing on this exam. You're responding in conversation in an informal way with a robust vocabulary and full sentences. I've trained people in the TOEFL exam, the, the test of English as a foreign language. And it's this like very fake way that you fill things up. Um, and that's more important than being perfect or, or all those things. So for all your anxiety, I get it. It's AP exams are, are very nerve wracking this year. You've only got a few minutes, but really trust your own voice. The second part of the exam is the cultural comparison, la presentación oral. And this is going to be very similar to the question four that you're used to. Um, and it's been a little bit modified so that you're only listening to the in instructions. Now listen, escucha, you're gonna hear the task directions four times, twice in English and in Spanish. Then you're gonna hear the cultural comparison prompt three whole times. You should take notes as you listen, jot down words you don't know. Um, if, if the word is, um, I don't know, a, some, some um, what would be a word? Um, manifestaciones en la ciudad. Manifestaciones, and I was like, what's a, when I was in Spain in 2012, they kept talking about manifestaciones, these protests in the streets. And I was like, oh, that's what that is, right? So there's always a word that kind of can trip you up if you're a non-native speaker. Manifestaciones is a word you look up and you figure out what that is. So you keep notes using um, what you have in front of you, using the paper that you have there. You're going to be asked to discuss a spe specified aspect of culture, familia, tecnología, ciencia, arte, belleza, ling uh, idioma, in a Spanish speaking community, donde quiera, it doesn't matter, Peru, Mexico, Madrid, Cuba, Argentina, with which you are familiar and compare it to that in their own or another community. And normally it's just easy. There's a lot of American students on the call today um, to just say like, en los Estados Unidos um, and fill that out. And by the way, um, there's so many great questions um, all, you know, coming in through the chat, just a quick couple quick things. The interlocutor, the, the speaker is going to control the whole thing. You're gonna hear these beeps. If you have not yet downloaded the app, you must go download the app. 
from the College Board's website. Well, we posted links before in the chat. We'll post them again. You can only take this exam on a phone or tablet. For those of you are who are um, concerned about other questions, like can you please go through the CED? I actually did that uh, here on, on this video. Uh, can you go through, uh, or in this video, I think, um, go through examples of cultural comparison. I've done that in all of these things and even going over the format. So after the stream is over, got all these videos right here on our channel. Definitely, if you're new to our channel, subscribe. We're gonna be posting all sorts of great videos. And if you like this video, if you enjoyed yourself, press that like button for me and we'll keep working. So here's the format. Um, and again, it's it's designed a little bit differently. As I said earlier, it's only units one through four. Okay, so um, we have we've talked about now, let's just kind of summarize where we've been. You need to get the app downloaded and situated. You need to get yourself out of practice mode and follow the technological specifications that we put in there. Um, do you do that? You set up your espacio and you say to yourself, in este sitio necesito notas, un diccionario de papel, mejor un diccionario de internet. You can use any books and notes that you want, any tools. Are you gonna have auriculares? Get that plan sorted out. Um, remember, some students have struggled on the World Languages app with like staying in practice mode or getting pinged with notifications. Plug in, like seriously guys, like plug in the phone and then you'll be like much calmer, right? Um, and you do that and it sets you all up. We've talked about how it's only units one through four. It doesn't, there's not really vocabulary lists you need to study. You also don't actually need to study the other culture because like the facts don't matter that much. You don't wanna make up stuff completely, but if you've studied one specific region or your family's from region, if you are from Puerto Rico, if you are from uh, El Sur de España, Andalucía, if you are from Chile, then talk about those communities because that's what you have in front of you. And if you live in a Spanish speaking community in, in parts of the United States, wherever, use those examples and, and don't worry about the details. Oh no, it was slightly factually incorrect. That doesn't matter. And don't worry, please, please don't worry about your accent, right? Some people are like, I'm a native speaker and I speak in kind of a messy, casual way. Do your best version of like textbook Spanish, but don't worry about it. And some of you all have terrible accents. I know I've been a Spanish teacher for almost 20 years. And the first project I do is I take like, hola, quiero hablar en español. And I like try to fix that. You can't fix that between now and the exam. And we've seen on already in multiple of the videos that I've done on this website, we've seen many examples of non-native speakers with junky accents doing very well because they respond in fully fleshed out details. Now, what I want to do real quick is run to um, the chats. Yes, you can use headphones, not required. Great. By the way, so many great comments. I really appreciate you guys in the chat and on this video afterwards. People have been answering questions with really accurate, helpful responses. And I just want to thank you um, because that made answering all the questions um, uh, all, very, very easy and very helpful. Okay, so a couple things I'm going to do. I'm going to go to a prompt that we haven't looked at in any of the video series. Again, we've got this whole YouTube channel here for you all. Um, and uh, this whole playlist. Y vamos, vamos a practicar un poquito. Tenemos uh, the format of the exam, some, some various reviews. Crucially down here at the end, um, I've got the video that goes through the CED. Um, what I want to do is take you to the College Board's website. Um, and this is, you just Google AP Spanish, AP Central. It'll take you to the exams. Um, let's take a look uh, at the 2015 example. And let's go to a cultural comparison. This is the bulk. It's 50% of your score. Um, and this is something about everyday life, la vida contemporánea. Um, that, wait, I don't want this one, hang on. Let me do, um, just make sure, because again, we're only in units one through four. See if I've got a good example. Uh, okay, Las Familias. Okay, and we had explored this in a previous video, but, uh, but this is a good one to look at. This is the 2016 official college board sample. The tema curricular es Las Familias y Las Comunidades. And remember, on the exam itself, they're not gonna be presenting you with text. It's only gonna be something you hear through your auriculares or by speaker. So the tema de la presentación, and you have four minutes to prepare, is ¿Qué tipo de eventos o actividades se consideran una expresión de la identidad cultural en tu comunidad? Compara tus observaciones acerca de las comunidades en las que has vivido con tus observaciones de una región del mundo hispanohablante que te sea familiar. 
En tu presentación puedes referirte a lo que has estudiado, vivido, observado, etc. Ok, pay attention, guys. You're going to get the instructions twice in English, twice in Spanish. You're going to get the prompt three times. So you need to say to yourself, are there any words I don't know here? And make sure that you jot them down so you look them up. Now, what's beautiful about this prompt is they jammed it with cognates, similar words in English. Que tipo, type, eventos, events, actividades, activities, are considered an expression of identity, cultural identity in your community. Compare your observations. They, they made it super easy and friendly. And if you look over the years, guys, they have done this in the cultural comparison prompt. So a lot of the panicking over oh no, I don't know all the Spanish words is like misplaced because they're not so hard. This one, um, and we did this in a previous video. ¿Cuál es la importancia, the importance, de los medios, the mediums, the media of comunicación, communication, en el desarrollo, the development, if you don't know that one, you can look up desarrollo, de la im imagen personal, of personal image, para las personas de tu comunidad comunidad, you're probably going to see. And then this, right, is the same stuff we saw before. Compara tus observaciones acerca de las comunidades en las que has vivido con tus observaciones de una región del mundo hispanohablante que te, se, que te sea familiar. En tu presentación puedes referirte a lo que has estudiado, vivido, observado, etc. Chicos, this is the same nonsense. So that's a very important point before we even proceed is that like The use of a dictionary, the use of this stuff is of very limited value because they're jamming these things with cognates and they're repeating the instructions. Now, remember, this year's format just changed a little bit so they can change those instructions around um, to adapt to the particular like oral only deliver, the fact that it's all happening on the phone. Okay, so let's go back to our ejemplo de, del año donde estamos. Este, en el año 2016. Las familias, y las familias is the first unit of the new course and exam description. Remember, units one through four are there. And, uh, you know, Parnica, and I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, can we compare a Spanish-speaking country with, like, India? Yes, if it's comparing two places. Um, it, and if Parnica, if you're in India or you're familiar with India, then that's um, there. Now, um, and the, right, so Parnica, that is your community. Remember, not everyone is in the United States taking this exam. And so, um, and Parnica, you might be in a very weird hour taking this exam because um, you, um, unfortunately, as many of you know, international students have to take these exams in the middle of the night, um, a lot of them. So um, yes, so you can use that, use the community you know, tu propia familia, tu propio estado. Yo vivo en Nueva Jersey. Yo viví en Nueva York. Yo conozco muy bien la comunidad, la ciudad de Madrid, donde viví en el año 2012. Um, and so that's very important. And let's just see really quick. Um, yes, we can. Do you guys have predictions? Um, let's just see. So real quick, want to make sure. Um, So again, the exam, you or guys are going to lo start logging in in two hours at 3.30 p.m. Eastern for a 4 p.m. Eastern exam. The exam will finish at 22 minutes after um, for those of you with regular time. So at 4.22 p.m. At 4.44 p.m. at double time, you were permitted to discuss on social media and wherever you like the topics. Remember, it's whatever the double the time is for extended time students. So on typical AP exams, you guys are the very last one of, of all 38 AP exams. Um, and I, I wish you all the best of luck in this. Um, you're going to have um, at 4.44 p.m. Eastern, you're going to be allowed to talk about it. Um, And thank you for all the love and all the happiness in the chat. For those of you guys just joining, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, definitely subscribe. We're going to be going live, doing all kinds of fun stuff, and like this video if you like the content. So let's let's practice a little bit here. ¿Qué tipo de eventos o actividades se consideran una expresión de la identidad cultural cultural en tu comunidad? So I did this in, again a while ago in one of my other videos, but I want you all to take a minute right now and think about specific actividades or eventos in In part of the Spanish-speaking world, una región del mundo hispanohablante que te sea familiar. Take that familiar. I ended with an English American accent. Um, right, tell me about this. What's what part of the world of the Spanish-speaking world, and what 
eventos or activities? Could you talk about? Write me a few sentences. Um, so, and I'll give you guys a minute in the chat. Everyone get your chat like ready. Um, while you're doing that, um, just so you know, extended time is for people who have accommodations on the exam. Um, and that's uh, just standard. If it's approved by the college board, they have it. Most students do not. Um, and okay, so take a minute and type in. So I would talk about dinner in Spain um, very late, which I've talked about, el Dia de los Muertos en México. De los Muertos, la celebración de Semana Santa en España. Que interesante. They wear those like weird cone hat things. Um, let's see. You know, and it doesn't have to be a city specifically, um, Grecia del Bosque, but it can be uh, any country, anything, any community. Um, the Semana Santa in Guatemala, the Toda la Semana, um, you know, and Luca, no te preocupes because I've got a video on test anxiety in this channel that'll set you right at ease. You're not gonna be perfect in this exam, you're just gonna be great and you're gonna do well. Um, la cena, la cena es muy importante um, en España porque se cena a las 10 por la noche, a las 11, a medianoche. Los, los niños, los niños de seis años, de ocho años, de cuatro años, están sentados en una mesa cenando a las once y media por la noche. One time I was in Spain and uh, there was a children's birthday party that was, the kids were stomping their feet and it was maybe almost one in the morning and they were like six years old. I was like, que tipo de país es este, right? Because like in America, it's like kids are in bed by six. Um, and so it was a very interesting thing, but any specific thing that you want to talk about. El Día de los Reyes Magos en México. Um, en, en España se come un roscón de reyes. En, en, y hay una um, pastelería que se llama La Mallorquina en, en Madrid, que se vende, donde se vende este tipo de roscón de reyes que me encanta. Es solamente el día de, uh, el 6 de enero, um, which is great. And no, and you know what? This is a really great question I've gotten here about like, can I just write my answers on the page um, and read from it? Go for it. Like you want to make that sound natural, but like if it's giving you some cues, some bullets, go for it. Um, in Ecuador, praying for, rezando, Semana Santa is Holy Week, um, a very important um, uh, religious uh, holiday with processions and parades in the Catholic Spanish speaking world. Um, well, um, it will not say, I don't think Vikesh is going to say belleza y estetica. I don't know that this will be there. I haven't, no one's taken the, this new exam, but I don't think that that, that will likely be there. Maybe, but they are going to read this to you three times, which is plenty of times. Um, buena suerte a todos, Holy Week. Do we have to compare two communities? 100,000%, you must, and I'll do this in English here. You will make an oral presentation on a specific topic to your class. You will have four minutes to read or, or prepare. Um, they're gonna listen, they're gonna play it three times. You're not reading anything. You'll prepare your presentation and then you have two full minutes, 120 seconds. In your presentation, compare. So it's gotta be, en los Estados Unidos, donde vivo yo, en mi comunidad, la cena, Está a las seis por la noche. En el, pero en España es muy diferente. La cena empieza a las diez por la noche o quizás a las once. Um, and you talk about that, those differences. Dinner begins at six where I live and it begins at 10 or 11 in Spain. Let me tell you guys, that is so weird having dinner. Jamón ibérico de bayota, vino tinto de casa, um, eh, cochinillo. All of the like weird um, merluza. What was the one? Uh, percebes. Percebes are barnacles, which is a real a delicacy. They look like little shrunken manitos de dinosaur, like little dinosaur feet. Oh, that's the other one. Manitas de cerdo. Manitas de cerdo are pig's trotters, and they're disgusting too. And I ate those at like one in the morning in Spain, and then like at three, I'm like waking up in the middle of the night, like. Nah, que pasa? Um, and so anyway, that's stuff that you can talk about because that's so different from another cultural, any cultural um, area, community that I'm, from, uh, that I'm in. You should demonstrate your understanding of cultural features of the Spanish speaking world. So this is why you can't just like totally make up stuff. Do not be like, uh, España es la capital de México. Like don't say nonsense. Um, try to speak about specific things because this is, um, 
Spanish language and culture. This is an opportunity for you to, to speak in an organic way. It's not going to be like fact check, but it's got to be coherent. And you should also organize your presentation clearly. So let me say one other thing again to the native speakers in this room. I'll switch over here. Debes organizar tu presentación de una manera, manera clara. You should be clear. A lot of native speakers are like, I've speaking Spanish my whole life. I'm a genius. And the problem is that that, like I said earlier, that one, two, three structure isn't there for you necessarily because you don't, you're not used to speaking in fake AP Spanish ways. And I want to encourage you to say, hay tres diferencias entre los Estados Unidos y España. La primera diferencia tiene que ver con la cena. And then do your little line about that. La segunda tiene que ver con las celebraciones de Semana Santa. Aquí en los Estados Unidos, ¿qué es Semana Santa? No celebramos, pero en España. Be, 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 and you go into the details. Um, so that is what the specific instruction is. I just want to take a look again at this chat. So many great um, comments and things. Um, thank you guys. Yeah, and okay, Arushi, tengo mucho miedo porque todos me dicen que hablo español muy bien. So you are very afraid because everyone tells you that you speak Spanish very well. Um, so that's why you should be confident. And, and this, by the way, is not going to be the real topic. Um, and let's see, uh, real quick. Um, yes, and Sandra Delgado, that point about, and you can see it in, in Los Ejemplos, the college board, you have these people who are just like, they just are relying on their native accent to filibuster and fill and just say stuff. But like that kid who's like, yo quiero mucho. And then like, they, but they actually have two minutes of substantive stuff that's really well organized, they do better. So be a hybrid of the two. Someone who's speaking fluently and confidently. It's not really about your accent, but do the best one you can. But somebody who's also like the most proper and organized. Okay. Um, so uh, people are asking me about, uh, so I took AP Spanish in high school. Um, I took a lot of um, AP exams and I did very well because I studied the format, I paid attention. What happened to this year's exam though, is that all the writing, all the reading, all the text in front of you, all the multiple choice, the email, the other thing, it all blew up and went away. And now it's only a speaking task. And I think that that's, personally, I think that's really unfortunate because it means that there's just that one skill, but don't cry about it. Focus on what you can control. And what you guys can control right now is your frame of mind with all this. So if my live stream is making you panicky and like worried, let's all just take a moment to just breathe. Like actually breathe with me. Right? Go into this exam with confianza in tu propia voz. Trust your own voice. It's what you have. A lot of you have been working on your Spanish for years, guys. I worked, I started learning Spanish when I was 13 years old. Um, I majored in it in college. I ended up, I thought that was weird. I'm like, why did I major in this? And then I started teaching Spanish and I uh, went to graduate school and studied the history of medieval Spain. And I moved to, to uh, Madrid for a, almost a year in, in 2012. And I love that experience. So I want to encourage you guys, all the hard work you've done your whole life to learn Spanish, everything you've done, all that time that you spent speaking Spanish at home, if you have, that's what's going to give you confidence, what's going to help you find your voice. You will not be perfect. Perfection is the enemy of your success today. Just be good. Be good enough. Get the job done. They ask you specific questions. You respond with specific full sentences. Con detalles. Flesh out the why. So, la razón or, or um, la cosa más importante es este porque este. And you, and you use those structures that you know. One thing about language that's so important is, and you, you can hear me doing it now in English, we speak in spurts, we pause, we use structures, one, two, three, I did this because, problem, solution, on the one hand, on the other hand, use those structures that you know to help guide your speech and, and give the reader a clue that you know what to do. So, um, I wanna do something real quick, which is I'm gonna take a look at the chat. Um, I wanna make sure so many wonderful people joining us. Um, and I've been learning Spanish for eight years and I know three words, that's not true. Um, and yeah, yeah, do not speak in a fake American accent. Um, and no, you, what you wanna do, um, 
and it is really take your time and just um, deliver the best formal response as if you're almost being judged as part of like a public speaking class. That's like the best way to think about it. Where in public speaking, we don't think about like, oh, your accent's like amazing or not. We think like, what was the quality of the answer that you actually gave? Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna pull up and write directly in front of me because I wanna make sure that I'm answering your question, um, answering all of your questions. The time, so I'm just gonna take these one by one and I wanna recommend again, and I have it here, um, I insist that you check out right after this live stream is over in a few minutes. Go look at all these hours of videos. You don't even have time to watch them all, but I have an example in the format. I break down some key things in this one. I broke down um, the specifics of the instructions of the or the, the units of the CED. I'll take a look at what I'm doing in each one of these. Whatever's helpful for you, do it. Um, that's right here on our channel. If you like our channel, definitely like this video, subscribe. Um, and stay in touch with us because we're going to be doing lots besides besides Spanish as well. Um, so let me pull this out and just really focus on the chat. You are absolutely allowed to use um, the, um, and you know what I'm going to do real quick? I'm going to, no. Um, yeah. And okay. Yeah. So what I'm going to do real quick is just go back. Uh, a little bit. For the comparison, is it better to have an introduction or no? You uh, you can, Cesar, have one, um, but keep it short. A lot of people are like, hola, yo estoy aquí con ustedes, hablando sobre el tema de información and the familia. Like, don't. Um, get fast. Um, get right into your comparison. Talk about those two or three or whatever differences you have. Um, speak right up to the beep if you can. There will not be a timer. The beeps will be your clue. But there is, and you can see it in the practice app, guys. You can see a very specific um, thing where it will actually, um, yeah, you can see the recording right here um, where it's actually got the time going on it. So you will have, you'll have timer. It'll be dragging across. You'll be able to see it um, and know what's going on. Um, what if you forget a certain word you want to use, David? You speak around that word. And that's the beautiful thing about free response. Multiple choice, you can't do it. You're trapped, right? In multiple choice, you can do whatever you like. That's very, um, you can steer your ship around, around stuff you don't know. What are some formal greetings that are good to use? Don't uh, worry about that. Do you, uh, if they hear us typing, will they think we're cheating? No, because you're allowed to use a computer. I showed you guys this on the College Board's website. Um, and I'll just show it again real quick. The format for the exam um, is, no, that's not, hang on. I wanna make sure I have this here. The format for the exam, here's what they have, is required and permitted. Um, and just one second while I am looking. Uh, again, so this is the stuff you need to have, but notice you can have anything that you want. Print, online, or app-based dictionary, previous assignments, textbooks, notes. What you cannot do is collaborate with other people. And remember guys, you're not gonna wanna collaborate with other people in this exam because we've seen that the College Board throws out multiple different versions. So while you're talking about las familias, the other person is talking about tecnología and the other one is belleza y arte. And so you just have to work with what they give you. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. Um, if I live in a Spanish country, do I compare that to another Spanish country? So if, if you look at the instructions, it says your own community with another one. So you wanna make sure you're setting up a nice contrast. Um, and let's see. Um, and you could talk about similarities, right? It says compare, it doesn't say only differences. Um, Julian is asking, can I slow down my voice? Sure. Um, I recommend speaking, to the question about speaking slowly, I recommend speaking clearly. And sometimes people are like, with Spanish, and they go way too fast. Es que quiero hablar sobre it. And like, you want to make sure that you're understandable and that you're, and that gives you a little bit of time if you're a fast speaker to slow down and hit all of your points. People are asking whether they can use AirPods. Technically, yes. Try it with the software. If it's messing it up, have a quick backup plan where you throw those AirPods out the window. Hasta luego, AirPods, and you focus on just using a speakerphone or regular headphones. Um, okay, Ayumi's asking if we get brain block, is it okay to say um? So it's okay to say um, but I think it's better to just use a moment of silence. You're allowed to also correct yourself if you make a small mistake, that's totally fine. Um, so don't worry about any of that. Ayumi, you're not gonna have brain block because you're just gonna trust your own voice and not be um, uh, perfect. Okay, uh, let's see. 
um, use a Venn diagram, T charts confuse people. So you guys do what, yeah, differences and similarities. That's exactly right. This is, you can talk in any way that you want. Um, let's see, uh, do, 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 do. do they repeat the question ever? In the conversation, it's just once. So don't worry about that. Your speakers are messed up. Definitely try to get software. Any tablet or any phone will do. You can take it on somebody else's phone. Remember what they said though. You wanna have your device fully charged. You wanna reset the app. Um, and one of your friends, yeah, said AirPods didn't work. Make sure it does work with the software. Um, hasta luego, AirPods. Um, so let's see. And people are worried about stuttering. You're not being graded um, on any of that. So listen, guys, what I would like you to do is this. Um, yeah, and you <laughs> smile forever saying, you can say, em, en España, cuando tengo que pensar un poquito, yo, yo digo, em, instead of um, my American sound. Um, so listen, all this anxiety, all these chicos and chicas and niños and animales, whatever you are, worried, and profesores, maybe there's some teachers in here. I just want to say, don't worry about anything. There's not a lot riding on this exam. It feels super high pressure. It feels really scary, but it's not. You're gonna go in and you're gonna take everything that you've had, that you've done before. You're gonna do an imperfect job and deliver quality responses as best you can. You mess up one thing, you just dust yourself off and do another one. And as you go through the exam, Again, if you set your bar in perfection, you're gonna fail. If you set your bar in something you can do, the best of your ability, just go in and do the best work you can do. Um, and trust yourself, find your own voice. I wanna thank every single one of you for your wonderful questions and comments, for being great. Uh, people who've subscribed to our channel, like this video, stay in touch with us at Marco Learning. Um, my name is John. I'm gonna be doing some amazing videos with all the other teachers here, Tom and Elena, and everyone at Marco Learning on college admissions, AP exams, everything to help you out. Couple of tips. What do I do? I have a million questions. You didn't answer my question, I'm sorry. Um, here's a real quick thing I want y'all to do. On our channel, we have a playlist. If you have not seen these, they're all here for you. This one goes over the format and what you need to do. This one goes to the CED. And these other ones go through sample practices. We talk about best practices, what you can do to get through the exam and get ready. So definitely subscribe to our channel, stay in touch. After, this, after we post this video, we're gonna post this right to our channel, so it's here. Post your questions. I'm gonna be answering questions until the exam, until that window where the exam begins. Remember that you wanna log in at about um, uh, just under two hours and 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The exam begins at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. And trust yourself, you guys are gonna do great. Love to all of you. Um, say goodbye in the chat. I hope that this has been useful for you. Um, it's been so wonderful talking with all of you. I que tengas que tenga que, que tengas buena suerte en este examen hoy eh, que tengas confianza en tu propio tu propia voz y identidad y vocabulario y todo so thank you guys best of luck i'm here to answer anything you need